What's up guys, Chasing Lamey here with episode number one of Club One of the World's Hardest Hexagon Challenge. We have joined Ordino FC in Andorra's top flight, which is a bit of a come down. Warm welcome to all of you who are new to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that said, a very warm welcome to our newest subscriber, Andy Pierce. We're going to roll the titles now, and we're going to come back. We're going to play our first game, and I'll introduce you to the new signings, or some of the new There's been a lot of new signings. I'll introduce you to some players. So here we are then, and I said I would introduce you to the new signs. Like I said, I'm not going to introduce you to all of them, because if I show you our transfer history, you're probably going to have kittens at the thought of me introducing all of these brand new players to you. It's taking a while to load, because there are many, many, many new signings. Give it just a second, and it will come. There we go. So, yeah, uh, it's been a busy window. Um... I think the total count of new signings here is about 90 because I essentially signed players. I begged every club in England to loan me anyone they had on loan and got a few of those in. And then I went through the free transfers list. And I kind of played, because I haven't got any scouts or scouting budget, I kind of played a little bit realistically in that anyone we knew of who was available on a free, I went through every single one of them, and if they had played for a big club at any point in their career, I brought them in. That's kind of how it's gone. Because I'm not going to go through them all individually. You can see here I've got players on loan from Luton, QPR, Swindon, Ipswich, Portsmouth, Nice. Uh, I've got a couple of players, I think, on loan from uh, big French clubs. I've got a player on loan from Hull. That was not a big French club. Leeds, Bristol City... I brought in some players from uh, Social, I think, and I brought in some players all over the place. It, it would take us years to go through all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the first game of the season. I'll introduce you to the players in the starting eleven, and we'll get to know the new players as they come in. I think that's probably the best way of doing this. So today we're playing against Peña e Carnada. Never heard of them. They're another, obviously, top flight side in Andorra. And we're starting off with a 4-3-3, a very basic wide wing play, 4-3-3. Start on balance, just see how things look. Minimal instructions, just keeping things as simple as humanly possible. But let's meet the starting eleven. So in goal, we have Luis Ferrero, who that will pop up in a second. Here we go. He is an Argentine goalkeeper. He is 33 years old. He's not had a great career in terms of anything to speak of. He's not a player I actually signed. He's a player that was here when I got here. So we'll have a look through his career history. You can see he's, he's starting to decline, but he's rated as being four-star, which makes him one of the better goalkeepers, I would think, in the division. He's played in the C, Primera C, which I think is the third tier of Argentine football. Twelve games there. A few more games probably down here. He's, yeah, he's been around a little while in the lower reaches of the Argentine League. He has somehow found his way to Andorra and will be starting in goal for us today. So hopefully he'll be a strong presence between the sticks. Uh, our next player is our right back. His name is Francisco Gerardo. He is Spanish. Again, was here when I got here. I haven't signed him, but he's been playing in the third division in Spain for a while. Previously played for Malaga in La Liga 2. Um, I say played for, he was in their B team, but he was with Malaga, so he's got a decent pedigree, and he will start for us at right back. Our first centre-half is a player I've actually signed. He is Nasuf Ahmada, or Ahamada, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, we'll get there. He's alright for this level, left-footed central defender. He is from the grand nation of Comoros, which is in Africa. I believe. He's had an interesting career. I signed him, like I said, I went through the idea of going through the players who are available on freeze, have they played for a big club at any point in their career, sign them, see how they go. And he's joined us from, well, from Sarcelles in France, but he previously played for Nantes, or came through the youth team in Nantes. He's only 19, so we'll hope he can develop a little bit more and become a better player, and hopefully he'll be a strong presence in our back line. 
alongside him, another player who was here when I got here, a 21-year-old Argentine centre-half called Gonzalo Cerato. Uh, he has had an interesting career. Like I say, wasn't it? he was a player who was already here when I signed him, or when I got here, sorry. So he's not a player I've signed. But again, here's history. He's played in the top flight in Argentina for Boca. He's played at Ferro. He's played at Nueva Chicago, who dip in and out. Bit of a yo-yo team in Argentine's top flight. Last season was apparently at Deportivo Zoe. I don't know who they are, but they were outside of the Argentine league system. He came into us. And like I said, he was a player who was, I think, here when I got here. I don't remember signing. I may have signed him. Either way, I signed a lot of players. He's got a good pedigree. He's got some decent attributes. He's pretty quick for this level. He's pretty good at tack well, in the air for this level. Very good at tackling for this level. So we should hopefully see some good performances from him too. Our left back is Ezekiel Vargas, a 26-year-old Argentine. Another player who was here when I got here. Uh, pretty good for this level. Uh, he's got the quickness. He can cross a little bit. He can definitely mark. Good work rate, good decision making. Hopefully he'll be a good presence for us. He played in Spain for Benicarlo last season, but he has also played around for Sportivo Italiano in the C division of Argentina and in the top flight for River Plate. So again, another player with a great pedigree for this level. Playing as our holding midfielder today is Callum Nicholson. He is a 19-year-old Englishman. He's very tall. I'm going to try and convert him into a centre-half, I think as time goes forward, but he's quick, he's naturally very fit, good work rate, determination could definitely use some work, that's definitely a thing we need to take into account with him, but he's got good vision, good tackling, passing could use some work, he's definitely more of a centre-half, I think, than a defensive midfielder, but we can fix that. He has joined us on loan from Luton, he's never played for Luton, but obviously he's with a championship club, you have to assume he has some chance of being both a good player and becoming a better player. Playing as our deep line playmate today, 21-year-old Argentine Juan Farinella. He has had a respectable history in terms of having played for River Plate and Defences de Belgrano, but never played a game for either side. Had a couple of years out of the game, apparently, but he can pass the ball. He's got good vision, good technique, good first-touch decision-making. Work rate, determination, a play you'd like to see kept around. We can probably work on little bits of his stats elsewhere. But pretty good so far from what I can see. Playing box to box alongside him is Jonathan Estrada. He is 39 years old, one of the senior players in our squad. He is from Colombia. He's had a very long career, as you'd imagine, from a 39 year old. He's been playing in Andorra now for two seasons, played for Genlai and Caroy, one of our Premier Division rivals. But before that, has played for Envigado, who are a pretty decent club in Colombia, Colombia Junior, Millonarios, Bucaramanga, uh, Tolima, Boyaca, Medellin. Uh, he's played in Brazil, in Syria as well, for whoever ABBA are, because for some reason the league fix isn't working for us. Also for Real San Sebastián, who I think are Deportivo La Coruña, off the top of my head. My brain doesn't really remember the name changey teams, but he's been around. He's had a lot of games, a lot of games. I mean, I would take off the 11s. 420 league games in Colombia and Brazil's top flights, as well as spending a time on loan in Spain. So, pretty good player, I would suggest. And at 39, may not have long in the tank, but he's got the stats to tell me he should be in the team for now. And hopefully he can be a driving force for us. Maybe we can get him to do some coaching for us. See how that goes for us. On the right wing for us today is Kevin Fernandez. He is an Argentine 21-year-old who has decent pace. He can cross a ball. He can finish, so I can play him up top if I need to. He's pretty good all round as wingers go. His career history, again, interesting. And in he's played, or he was in the top flight for Caleres in Argentina. And before that, played in the Torneo Regional for some team in Rosario. So he's definitely at some stage shown some potential. He is rated at three and a half stars for us and four and a half star potential ability. So we can only assume he's probably got some potential to make some waves for us. And on the left wing is Samuel Senior Balde. He is a 
Guinea-Bissau International. Guinea-Bissau, I think, is in South America, but plays in CONCACAF, unless this is the one in Africa. There's a lot of Guineas in the world. He's very quick, left-footed, always useful, decent with a cross, good first touch, some leadership, some determination, some flair. I mean, he's not a world-class player, but you're not going to get a world-class player anywhere in this division. I signed him because he had an international cap, which is a good enough reason to sign anyone to play in Andorra. I played in Guinea-Bissau, played a few seasons in Portugal for Cartaxo as well, so we'll assume he's got something great to offer us long term. And up top in this starting lineup is Agostino Mane. He is also from Guinea-Bissau. He has a cap for their national team. He's 22 years old. Playing as an advanced forward today, which if we click on the advanced forwardy what's he do are there, you'll see that his finishing, his first touch, his dribbling all on point, off the ball on point for this level. Decent passer, good technique, probably could be a bit quicker, but you're not going to get world-class fast athletes at this level. Three-star current ability, three-and-a-half star potential ability. Has been playing for VTSC. I don't really know who VTSC are, but they're in the top division in Portugal and in their B team and done some time as well in Guinea-Bissau. So another player well worth us having up top. And we'll see what, if he is going to be a star performer, a big goal getter for us. He's had three goals in three appearances in the pre-season friendly. So that's a good sign. The bench starts with Casey Petit, another player on loan to us from Luton. He is a defensive midfielder slash regular midfielder. Plays as a Masala as his base kind of role, which is okay. I mean, not got the, really got the vision for it, but good passer, good tackler, good technique, good first touch, good work rate, big potential. Some good pace for a midfielder at this level as well. Has never played for Luton, but that shouldn't hold him back. We'll hopefully get some good things from him. Brian Okongo Belongo, a 21-year-old Englishman who has joined us on loan from Middlesbrough. He's had an interesting career to him as well. We'll get into that in a second. Because he can play at left back, left wing back, and at centre half. Has good positioning, uh, good tackling. He's decent in the air. He's reasonably quick. Definitely going to probably, well, I say definitely going to probably will play some first team football at some stage. Has joined Middlesbrough last season for £100,000 from Kingstonian, which must be the biggest money Kingstonian have received for a player ever. Uh, 20 games for Kingstonian, also played for Hanworth Villa, started his career at AFC Wimbledon. But a player who I picked up on loan from Middlesbrough because he was available, they were willing to loan him, and I thought we'd take a gamble. We have a left winger slash striker from New Zealand called Brian Mashingaitze, who I know very little about, I'll be completely honest, but he is very quick, which inspired a lot of faith in me. Uh, I wanted a player who could speak English, that helped as well, because I don't have anyone, especially who can speak English and Spanish, because that means I can help use him to help communicate with the team. He's quick, he can pass a ball, he's got decent technique, he's nothing special, but who knows what, how he'll turn out. He's been playing in Spain for the last few seasons and previously or started his career in Australia. So we'll assume he can offer us something for at least a little while until I can find someone else on the left wing. Our backup striker is Augusto Saiz. He is a 21-year-old Argentine. This is his first club. He just kind of came up on the, uh, the scouting and I thought I'd offer him a trial. He took it. He looked good. And he signed for us on a free, so I can't complain about him at all. Again, we're mostly playing with advanced fours this year. He's a poacher by nature. He's a decent finisher for this level, decent composure. Not necessarily quick, but we'll work on that and we'll see if he can be a, a good contributor. Mason McLean as a centre-half on loan from QPR. Can also play as a right-back. We'll look at his centre-half stats, though, because that's primarily what he's here for. Good tackle, a good header, good jumping reach, very tall, quite quick, good stamina, good decisions, good leadership, everything you can really ask for. Has never played for QPR, but that's fine. We'll give him some games and we'll see what kind of player he can become. Also on the bench is Arnaldo Krasniki, an English, an English 19 year old. He has joined us on loan from Huddersfield, played it for Falkirk last season, but he's had. You know, he's had some good grounding with Huddersfield in the Championship. You can't 
you can't see say he's not had some good experience in terms of his coaching background or in terms of his development background. I've signed him to be a defensive midfielder. He can play at a centre half. We need him to, but he's not great in the air. We'll we'll use him as and when we need to, as and where we need to, and hopefully he'll get some good performances for us. We'll see how that goes. And the final man of today's bench is right winger, come attacking midfielder, come striker. Essentially a guy that just gives us a lot of options. He's more potential than ability right now. This is Dan Gifford, an 18-year-old Englishman with some good pace, with some good finishing. Terrible crosser for a winger, it's got to be said. But, you know, he's there to develop rather than to be necessarily a first-team player on a regular basis. He's on loan to us from Portsmouth, spent last year with Bognor Regis, where he got 10 goals in 8 appearances. And I would suggest that the Isthmian Premier League and the Premier Divisio are probably at a similar level. So I can't imagine he wouldn't get some goals here. But we'll see. That's, that completes the bench. It's just time for us to go back now and submit that lineup. So we're in the dressing room and it's a case of I want to be impressed today. Go out, put on a show. That's achieved nothing. So we'll do what we've done before and we'll just say go out there and make a difference. See if anyone gets a little bit excited by the idea of going out and playing some football. Obviously, the team don't know each other very well yet, so that's going to help or going to hurt us with team talks. We've got a tunnel interview, which tells me this game is going to be on TV, which is very weird. I, actually, to be fair, I found some Andorran League games on YouTube and watched a couple whilst I was preparing for this. Uh, so it's not impossible that we're just being broadcast on YouTube. Our ambitions matched by the chairperson. Of course they are. How are you feeling? I feel great about the debut. Will the first goal be crucial? Of course it will. That's going to be a thing I delegate in future. Apparently we have gone into 2D pitch mode, which is very unusual because I definitely didn't set it up to have 2D pitch mode and I need to work out how I get that into non-2D pitch mode. This could be interesting. I, I'll work it out. So we're going to highlight from kickoff then and we are back in 3D pitch mode finally. And it's Mirabaji on the ball for Peña Encarnada. We are playing in the black, just to make it easier for you to understand what's going on, because it's not a big team situation. Ferrero does okay to try and clear that, and we are back into business, trying to get things going. Hopefully. Hopefully. I throw him for us now. It's with Vargas on the far side. I've, got, I've, up, I've loaded a new skin. I've been using the default skin for years, and it's taking me a minute to work out where everything is which is not helping at all. Gerardo clatters it off of Fernandez. Fernandez picks up the ball again, though. Farinella on the ball. Gerardo into the box, looking for Mane. Mane on the volley, hits the crossbar. Alfayete gets rid of it, and Chusosa will get onto the ball. And I've just realised that I need to speed the game up a little bit, because otherwise we'll be here all day. So we're going to zip that forward, and hopefully that will help us out. Ferreira now on the ball. Putting a, free, a goal kick, sorry, all the way forward. Peter is there to pick it up. Alfayate over the top. And Piloto is going to get there to Briega. Briega to Selfood. To Alfayate, who has been the guy I've seen most of so far. And that's over the bar from Grandona. And we have had another escape. Goal kick now for Peña Encarnada. And it's with Bastarchea over the top. Piloto heads it on Grondona, trying to chase it down. Ferrero has made a horrendous mistake and let Grondono in for the easiest goal he'll ever score. What on earth was that? Our two fans in the stands are raging. The attendance day is 68 people, so clearly a big game. Defender and goalkeeper just seem to have a horrible miscommunication, and Grondona has taken advantage, put that away. And we're a goal behind to some horrendous goalkeeping error, really. So that's half-time, and it's very hard to argue that we've been good <laughs> in this first half. That has got to be said. We'll go into the dressing room. We've got to be very careful because this skin has an instant result button. I need to make sure I don't click it or we're going to have a very short episode. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go into the dressing room. We have to be better in front of goal, start hitting the target more often. That feels good. Everyone seems nervous. I'm not sure why. I think defensively, we're going to say the defensive performance has been unacceptable. I think that's a fair comment. Midfield-wise, it's going to be a pump fists, go make a difference. And we're going to tell Agostino Baldi that 
he has not been good enough in front of goal. Hopefully he'll do something about that and we'll go see what we can do in this second half. Right, Peter with the ball over the top looking for Pelota, but Gerardo is going to pick it up. Needs to get that to one of his own players. Serrato on the ball. Over the top looking for Mane who can do nothing with it. It's weird having a Mane up top in Andorra. Uh, Serrato heads it on to Nicholson. Ball out wide for Fernandez. Can't find him. But Estrada picks up the loose ball, finds Fernandez with this one. Can he turn his man and produce something beautiful here? Back to Gerardo, to Farinella. Farinella over the top looking for Mane, who again completely fails to move for it. He's just not looking like a great player, is Mane. Armada, though, puts the ball forward looking for Mane, plays it onto Estrada. Estrada for Fernandez. Fernandez turns his man, gets into the box, has a pop, and it's just gone wide for a goal kick. And that's, that's not been great so far. I'm looking at some subs already, and Mane is definitely, definitely on the chopping block. Ferreira now with a goal kick for us. I've been making subs. I've sent a Congo Belongo on the left-hand side. Saiz, who's now on the ball, on up top. Can he get a goal for us? He does get to the goalkeeper and brought down by the goalkeeper. Is this going to be a penalty? It looks like it will be. It will be, and it's being taken by Estrada. The other sub that's come on is Gifford, who is playing on the right wing, but it's going to be Estrada to take the penalty. He puts it away, and we're back on terms with 15 minutes to play. Jonathan Estrada, the most experienced man in the squad. I mean, it's the kind of guy you need to be stepping up in a situation like this to be able to get that goal that puts you back on terms to make things all right again. And that's kind of what we've got there from him. But we still need to push forward and try and get ourselves another goal. It's just a matter of how long that takes or if we can achieve it, to be honest. Saez with a headed ball onwards, looking for no one really, but Peter or Hoof it away. Armada gets rid of it to Estrada. Estrada looking for Balde, can't find him. I mean, it was a wayward pass, if we're honest. Shusosa now on the near side for Peña and Carnada, and he's been tackled. And it's, that's going to be a penalty. And this is a chance for Ferrero to be a hero, to save his match rating. Mirabaji is going to be taking it. Ferrero almost gets there, but Peña and Carnado Dandora are ahead. And bitter, bitter blow after we'd worked so hard to get back into the game. I think I'm going to have to go a little bit attacking. I've been on positive for a while. We have to go a bit more attacking and try and force ourselves to get a chance to get ourselves back on terms here. And unfortunately that is the final whistle full time here at the centre doing Tranemont de la Faf 1 in Andorra La Vea and I mean, positives and negatives to be taken from this game. Estrada and Serrato have been good. Gerardo has been good. Fernandes and Vargas and Mane for sure have not been good and that's probably areas I need to work on. I don't like what I saw from this team is probably probably quite a valid criticism of them and we have to work out we get back because I don't know if we want to go long series or short series with this. Let me know in the comments. Do you want me to just fly through these early seasons? Do you want to see regular games? I was thinking sort of coming back every four or five games or so, but if you, yeah, it's a 21, 24 game season, I think. So let me know how often you want me to come back, and as soon as I see some feedback, we can adjust accordingly whilst we're waiting for this to load up, what I guess is probably going to be a tunnel interview, because they very often are. We'll work out when we're going to come back. It'll be about four games time, but obviously we need to see who we're coming back against. We know you don't want to, start, want to elaborate too deeply on the defeat. Can you give us your take on events on the pitch? Sometimes you have to accept that being the better side. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I'd like to say. What sort of reaction you expect after you seen to Mirabaji's late winner? It'll be fine. There was a lot I was pleased with. Was their late goal deserved? I mean, I think I'm going to say they were lucky we were the better team. Another side of mind, how disappointed I were. Not this hard, and we're just disappointed. I'm on a ridiculous contract here, by the way. £800 per week. That's like half my squad budget weird so we finished the day in sixth which you know one game played is not the end of the world we'll be completely honest let's go and see where we're at with our 
fixtures, however, because that is going to dictate where we end up. I guess our next game is against Inter de Scalaris in the league. They're one of the better teams in Andorra, so that's possibly going to be a, de a defeat. Let's keep going forward, though, because we don't need to worry about that. And I'll go through the mailbox. I've got a few more players I'm trying to bring in because apparently 90 wasn't enough. So, our next game, we're going to skip the Stellaris, Santa Coloma, Engordani. I think we're going to FC in Santa Coloma because I think if I've done my maths right, I'm just doing the maths now. So, that'd be f in fact, no, four games would be Athletic Escalades. Another four, Santa Coloma, another four, that'd be Santa Julia. Uh, yeah, that works out. Okay, so we're going to come back for Athletic Escalades, who I know nothing about, because I know nothing about any of the teams in this league, basically. They're predicted to finish second, which tells us it's going to be a big game. Their star player is this guy, Gilmar, who is a Colombian who has played for Levante and FC Andorra. And Estremadura and Bayarios. Uh, so, probably pretty good, if we're honest. Oh, there's some dirty stats there. Okay, luckily he's a centre half, so that's not the worst thing in the world. Anyway, I think that's probably a good time for us to wrap up this episode. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to get your name shouted out at the start of episodes, do drop a sub. Make sure you've got an account that's public, otherwise, you dropping a sub doesn't tell me your name is not terribly helpful anyway guys thanks for watching like subscribe ring the bell all that good stuff until next time i've been chasing lately and i'll see you all very soon have a good one